Good morning, everybody. We're locked and loaded. Just gotta get some of the snow off of here and then we'll hit the road. It is uh, about 6.30 a.m. right now. Got in here first thing in the morning. Uh, shout out to the very nice driver over there. He, uh, I was parked right here, right? And my light's off because I was just waiting for 6 a.m. to go in. They told me I should only go in at 6 a.m. Apparently I can go in at five. Well, he came in, he blew past me and cut in front of me in the line, got ready to just get loaded. And I got on the radio and I'm like, hey, 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 wait a second, hey, hey. Excuse me, you cut the line, bud. And I wasn't expecting a response, right? Because usually out here, drivers will just sort of ignore you and you know, cut in line and get loaded and be gone. They'll never see you again, right? This guy was super nice. He responded, he apologized, I'm so sorry, man. No, I, I misunderstood why you were parked there. I wasn't trying to cut in front of you. He let me back in front of him. He, he, he came out of there, went around, and uh, let me go in front of him and get loaded first. And now I'm loaded, ready to go, because I've been waiting here 15 hours and he just got here so uh very nice to see that there is some courtesy and some respectful drivers out there still it was an honest mistake and he corrected it and uh took his place in line so uh, i was encouraging it was really nice put me in a good mood first thing this morning to know that there's still drivers out there who care so start the vlog off on a good note i'm gonna get some of the snow off of here first because they loaded a little bit of snow on here i don't want that flying into traffic and got my tarps back here I've sent in my paperwork already. Everything is tight, 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 and tight. And now for the uh, obligatory, that ain't going nowhere, except with me. Let's go. Good morning to you too, Karen. Feeling kind of chipper today, are you? So I don't know if I'm going home tonight or if there's gonna be another load for me. I'm going to be begging for uh, for freight all the way back today. Because I wanna keep working, but seeing as it's New Year's holidays and it's a long weekend there may not be anywhere for me to pick up or to deliver everything's gonna be closed so we'll see what happens I'm probably gonna be going home tonight I'm gonna say through all my years experience I'm, I'm pretty certain I'm going to be going home but I'm hoping I can leave this weekend to deliver somewhere right after New Year's. Now we'll see what they got for me. I will use my Trucker Josh persuasion voice and ask them pretty, pretty please. A nickel for me, please. Could you spare a nickel? That guy just opened his door right into traffic, right in front of me. You see that? It's a beautiful day to be trucking in Minnesota. Look at this. It's almost like a Christmas highway. Yeah, I know I'm still stuck on Christmas. I'm not letting it go yet. So I know that when uh, I have you mounted where you are, my voice can be a little quieter. I'm further away from the mic. All I use for a microphone usually is the microphone built right into the GoPro. I'm using uh, my GoPro Hero 8 at the moment. I have a GoPro Hero 10 as well, which has similar quality microphone. So I sort of have to shout. And sometimes I forget to shout, and then in the editing, it's hard to adjust the volume. So I got a couple of comments on yesterday's video about that. My apologies. I, I try to level out the audio. But I am aware of it, and uh, I'll... Uh, keep an extra close ear on it when I'm editing. Sometimes if I boost the audio so you can hear my voice, it also boosts the audio of the truck sound. And my truck's a little loud, and then sometimes that can be overbearing. We'll get it, we'll get it. You know, I'm not a professional videographer or anything. I'm not a Hollywood producer. I'm just a truck driver just doing what he does out here, trying to share my life with you. This is U.S. 
Forks Highway 2. It's going to take us all the way to Grand Forks, North Dakota. From there, we're going to take Interstate 29 North into Manitoba. Just rolled through Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're about to meet up with the I-29 over here and head up to Canada. I'm gonna do today what I said that I uh, don't usually do. I've had a lot of time to think after uh, I noticed how low the fuel prices are in the US compared to Canada. Now, when all the fuel prices spiked around the world, Canada went along with everybody else. Now the United States has dropped back down to an all right level. It could still go down a lot further if you ask me, but it's gone down quite a bit. Our gas, our fuel prices for diesel in Manitoba have stayed the same, haven't budged. They're still sitting at $2.06 per liter. I'm gonna stop at Love's just south of the Canadian border in the U.S. on I-29. Fuel prices at Love's are $4.35 U.S. per U.S. gallon. Translation to Canadian money, that's $5.89 per U.S. gallon. Translate the U.S. gallons into liters, that's a dollar fifty six Canadian per liter. A whole fifty cents cheaper than just thirty miles up the road in Canada. Fifty cents per liter. 
I'm running at about a quarter tank right now. I'm gonna probably put in about 600 liters today. That's a savings of over $330. I believe, over $300. I'm driving right now, so forgive me if my math isn't perfect. But I know my fuel price math is accurate because I stopped and checked that out before. It's $1.56 per liter here, 30 miles up the up the road across the border at Flying J. It's two dollars and six cents. Why? Why has Canadian diesel prices not dropped along with US diesel prices? We're right here. Same region. So I'm gonna save myself over $300. Yes, I'm putting in US fuel into my tanks, which means I'm probably gonna to have to uh, consider adding in some anti-gel additive, at least consider it. But even that, that's a $20 jug. I'm still saving $280 plus, close to $300, even with the power service anti-gel in my tanks. Like that's a huge difference. That's where I'm headed to now. So, you know, I've always said I don't fuel in the US in the wintertime. Well, you know, the weather's gonna be mild the next few days for the next week. And if I have to, I can still add that power service anti-gel and it'll keep my fuel from gelling. I just thought that that was an extra added unnecessary expense, right? Why would I buy additives when I can just go up and up to Canada and buy the diesel fuel that doesn't gel? Why would I spend that extra 20 bucks a tank, right, or a fill up? This is actually a brand new truck stop here. Came up in the last couple of years. It's probably taking quite a bit of business away from the Flying J in Grand Forks. $4.35 US per gallon here. $5, what did I say before? $5.68 Canadian per gallon. $1.56 per liter. Can't argue with that. It's still too expensive, but I'll take it. Right over there. I've actually never been to this, loves, I don't think. I don't think I've actually been here. John's in here. Interesting, I thought McDonald's was usually associated with Love's. I guess it's different for every location. I'm gonna go under pump number one over here, or the first one. Let's save $300 right here. How about that? I'm gonna keep that money. Okay, so we filled up for 166 US gallons. That equals 628.378 liters. I was pretty much bang on. I thought about 600 liters. I know my truck. 
628 liters. So the price was $4.34, 4 $4.349. I'm just going to round it up. $4.35 US per gallon. That equaled out to $1.56 per liter Canadian. Cost me $721.93 US dollars or $977.76 Canadian dollars. It's the first fill up that I've had under $1,000 in quite some time now remember just down the road they're paying two dollars five five cents point nine so two dollars and six cents per liter subtract a dollar fifty six exactly fifty cents more per liter 30 miles that way so you times that by the amount of liters we bought and just by fueling up here today instead of just over there I saved myself $314.19 Canadian. Isn't that crazy how big of a gap that is? Like I know fuel in Canada is always more expensive than in the US, that's a given. But I've never seen the gap this wide. This is wild. $314 I kept in my pocket just now, one fill up. I burnt that in two days and I didn't even, it wasn't even two full days. Like, I'd, I'd burn that in pretty much a little over a day usually, like almost every day. So almost $300 every day I could be saving. You get it, right? I still don't get it. I still can't get that in my head. That gap is huge. Why aren't our fuel prices going down, right? I know they're gonna be more expensive than the US regardless, but 50 cents a liter more in Canada? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Otherwise, I'm going to get too many comments. You're complaining again, Trigger Josh. All you do is complain. I know. I know. I know I complain. I'm right here. I hear it too. I'm going to move up here and quickly run inside. Uh, then we'll be off to the races. So I told you yesterday, right? I got to replace that uh, my tail lights and license plate holder on the back of my truck. In 100 meters, take the entrance to the left on. North. It started to crack and break off from my frame, right? But I got it strapped on there and put on there right now, so it's not going anywhere. It's still on there, but it will need to be replaced very soon, right? The piece that I want is a big square chrome piece with a whole bunch of lights on it. And I'm gonna go pick it up when I'm at home next. It's about $400, I believe. So just this one fuel up, deciding to fuel up in the US instead of in Canada, almost paid for that whole thing. Well, I will be eyeing this US fuel a whole lot more in the future. Even in the cold of winter, I'll find a way to make it work. I'm just gonna have to be very careful about uh, fuel additives and anti-gel to make sure it doesn't gel up on me, but uh, we can make it work. For $300 savings every day, we can make it work. We will find a way. Money is a great motivator. We're here at our yard and we've moved my freight off of my trailer onto that Super B over there. And they're going to continue on with it from here. He is, I think, two of our loads onto a Super B. They can carry a lot more weight than these trailers. Huh. It was a rush. It was a rush. The guy was waiting here for me already when I got here. Well, we got it. I got it unloaded. He's got his stuff. He's got his paperwork. I've got mine signed. All set. Finished. Now... We're on to our next assignment already. I'm taking the same trailer back down to Thief River Falls. I'm gonna sleep there tonight. And then tomorrow we're uh, trading it off for a loaded trailer. And we're gonna bring that one back here and we might go back for another one yet and do two of those loads tomorrow. So that should keep me busy all day. Let's get going. I have just barely enough time on my clock to get back to Thief River Falls.
Still seems like it's so much later than it is, eh? It's only 20 after 5 in the afternoon. The lights are still purple. Just pointing it out. Is anyone keeping track of how long we've been waiting for those to be replaced? Oh, and it's busy. Everyone's going home from work. And I'm going to work. Or I'm still working. Trucker Josh's nerves. Drive down the highway with your high beams on. Or no lights at all. Oh, there you go. Now we got them. to Thief River Falls with 31 minutes left on my 14 hour clock. So I dipped back into Canada, dropped off that load, it got reloaded onto that Super B like you saw there, that one took off to wherever it was going. I didn't even look. <laughs> I knew where I had to bring it and that's all I cared about. I brought it there, job done, job complete. But uh, I kept the same step deck, it's empty, and I brought it back down here to Thief River Falls and tomorrow morning, Around the corner here, I have a trailer that's waiting for me. It's already preloaded, so I just gotta tie it down and uh, bring it back up to Canada with me. So thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. Thanks for watching. We uh, got a full day out of it. Drove about 991 kilometers or about 600 miles or so. It was a full day, felt good. Tomorrow, I think we're gonna do two of these. That's why I came down here to Thief River tonight already, because I had the hours to do so. I'm getting a little bit of a head start on tomorrow. I think I'm doing two loads out of Thief River back to our yard. So that's a really full day if you, uh, well, that's a, that's a decently full day if you start at our yard. But me, I'm getting a head start. I'm starting in Thief River. So I'll grab the load, bring it back to the yard, bring the empty trailer back down here, switch for another loaded trailer, bring it back. I think that's the plan. So I should get back at a decent time tomorrow night. And I made myself available through the weekend. Uh, we'll see if they have anything for me. I did throw a not so subtle hint. Just threw it in there to the load god saying, hey, I need to keep busy for the next two and a half months. Um, whatever you got for me. And uh, I haven't seen any palm trees in a while. <coughs> I hope they got my message. I was trying to be subtle, but it came out more like he sent me to the palm trees, to the land of palm trees just once. I mean, at least maybe a little New Year's treat in January. Get me away from the cold a little bit. I do have to stay close to home because my wife is in her third trimester. Well, almost in her third trimester and uh, once the baby's born, I'm going to have to I uh, keep doing what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm very happy in the position I'm in now, what I'm doing now with all this stuff. So things are going good. But every now and then I wouldn't mind seeing some palm trees, just saying. I haven't hugged a palm tree in years. And that's a problem. It's a palm tree problem. So we'll see. Doesn't mean they're going to send me down there. Uh, they got drivers that are already dedicated to that, right? They, they, they're the ones that go down there all the time. I would just like to snag one of those loads for myself. Maybe check out the great state of Florida or Arizona I'd even go to Utah I mean if you go to St. George Utah there's some palm trees there right it's kind of deserty Nevada yeah, yeah, anywhere out there not California though no, not California God bless you guys living in California there uh, I couldn't do it but hey somehow you're managing to do it and uh, 
Uh, my truck doesn't go to California. Uh, it's too old. So palm trees, we could go right up to the border. Maybe Las Vegas, Phoenix, New Mexico. Haven't been there in a very, very long time. If you send me to Georgia, though, it's got to be like South Georgia, like Savannah, Georgia or something. Otherwise, there's not going to be palm trees, and I don't want palm trees. Ah, we'll see what happens. Beggars can't be choosers, right? And I'm just begging for anything they can throw at me. If I don't get to see palm trees, I don't get to see palm trees. That's okay. It's more important for me to be, uh, be around for the important uh, stuff that's coming. There's a baby. Have you noticed? Have I mentioned it? Ten times today yet? There's a, there's a baby coming. Excited. All right, that's enough chatting for today. Uh, I'll see you in tomorrow's vlog. If you haven't already, still, according to my analytics, 41% of you that aren't that, that that are watching my video right now, 41% of you are not subscribed. So I challenge you now, all 41% of you, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching my channel. Go hit that subscribe button. It's free, it's super easy, it helps me out a lot, and I'd love you forever. I promise. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you here as a new subscriber, right? Huh? See, now I put the pressure on you. Now, now you're gonna feel bad if you don't, right? Is it working? <laughs>